Hi everyone, and welcome to this webinar looking at our 3D floating cursor. So I just want to wish everybody um, uh, that does Happy Easter, those that don't. Hope you didn't have too many people bother you at work. But yeah, welcome to our first uh, webinar for, was it April? Um, and uh, I'm Martin from Support, and I will be joined today by... Hi there, I'm Karen. Um, I'm working in the background here helping out with uh, questions and answers which we will do um, throughout the webinar. If you have a question, use the Q&A tab, and Martin is showing you on the screen exactly where it is. Um, so uh, yeah, please use that one. It's where we look for questions. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the webinar. I think this is an exciting one, so I'm looking forward to it as well. And see you later. Thank you, Karen. Right, let's get back to it. So. Okay, I've got a browser window open. This is what we're gonna be playing around with today. It's the floating 3D cursor. Now this one's actually proper 3D. As you can see, if I zoom out, it distorts with the with the window. It, it sort of stays pinned to the floor. And as we move up to the horizon, it sort of disappears off and out. And you can see it's um, active or it's, it's reacting to areas showing a, a 3d tooltip as well that's something that we did and when we click we can you know obviously change locations all right now there's a lot to this um hence why we thought we'd make a webinar out of it it's not just another um component that we were going to put into the uh, forum we it, it i thought right okay there's lots to do so or lots that you can play with and adjust and modify and change so it just made a lot of sense to make this into a webinar. Right, okay, so first things first then, um, the actual cursor itself, it is basically a floating cursor. If I open up the skin editor, you'll see that the main nuts and bolts of this, the actual core, is a text code block, um, which is what Thomas uh, came up with. This is what pins the uh, the actual cursor to the floor and makes it disappear on the horizon lots of code in there so let's not worry about that anymore right okay but what it does refer to within this code is this container float cursor all right so you can't change this if you change the name of this you're going to break it um however if you did want more than one in there all right because i was playing with this a bit earlier you could literally copy and paste all this text into a plain text document then you could do a find and replace um float cursor there you go with something else so you could have then two tech code text boxes and then two two float um, uh, or, or, or two containers with slightly different names with slightly different cursors and then you can get them to hide and show at different times if you wanted to do that Personally, I don't, so I've left that well alone. But I have had a play, and it is possible for it to do it. Okay, so the code is um, uh, referring to a container called Float Cursor, and inside that container, we've put, or I've put a um, rectangle, but I've given it um, the radius of 999 pixels, so turned it into a circle, and I've given it a uh, border width of 10 pixels that's making it into a ring. Okay, so if I do no more with this and set close and export this out, we'll see that we just have this cursor on the floor. Now it's not doing anything, it's just following the mouse. Now with that said, um, one thing I did forget to do, um, let's have a look at this. Let's take that out. I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing in a second, but just bear with me for a second. Um, just had a quick look. Right, so let's just re-output this out again. You can see that I've got my mouse cursor in the panorama as well as the floating cursor following it. Okay. Uh, now it's a solid element as well. It's it's uh, it, it's a, a solid uh, cursor, um, so it's it's quite visible. Right now. One of the first things we wanted to do, or, 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 or one of the steps I wanted to cover, was how to get rid of the mouse cursor from within inside the panorama. Now I've already covered this in other webinars, so if I select, um, if we go into the skin, select the skin's canvas and go down to the embedded style sheet, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to grab a bit of code, all right, and I'm going to copy this and paste it into the style sheet. So I'm just going to 
tidy this up a little bit. So there's the code to um, uh, curse and none, and it's saying it's important. But what I also want to do is just tidy up our little bit of CSS here as well. So I'm just going to do the following. All right, here we go. So just this is just purely for visuals just to tidy it up so there you go so you can see that here's a little bit of css here that hides the cursor and this is the standard css that comes with pano 2 vr to style the text boxes and the font size so if i now click ok to that save and we export you'll see that the mouse cursor now has gone and the ring is actually following the mouse now the reason why that ring is following the mouse is because of going because of thomas's um, uh, code in the code block so basically um, the uh, this container if you look the top left hand corner is basically where the mouse is going to be so the ring as you can see here is positioned so it's in the center. If I was to position it um, like down or whatever, then the mouse would have been either at the top, bottom left or right, wherever. But I've positioned the, the actual rectangle because it's 60 pixels wide. I've gone minus 30 to one side and minus 30 up and that puts my mouse cursor in the middle. Okay, so that's basically setting it out. Now, one of the other things I want to do is say to you guys is look, don't panic about all of these pieces of code because what we will do is at the end of the webinar, we will make this into a component and post it into the components forum. So all you'll do is you'll go to it and it'll be just ready to use. What this webinar is all about is the many different ways that you can change it, change its shape, form and colors and do whatever you wanna do with it. All right, so that's basically what the webinar is all about, but this will be a component in the in the components um, uh, forum and it'll have most of what we're doing already done. Okay, so with that said, what we have then, let's go back to the output, is a ring, but it's not doing a great deal because we're gonna get it to react to polygon hotspots. All right, so all I need to do then is um, ooh, select polygon hotspot mode, and I'm going to draw my first polygon. Now, think about this. I actually want this to be active for quite a portion of the panorama. So I'm going to start my polygon right up here and just basically finish it there. So that's my polygon. All right, I've drawn the polygon to go to, in this case, it's going to be going to node 5. And all I need to do now, once it's been drawn, is drag and drop into the polygon area. And you can see it's added the, the title, it's added all the data I need it to add, and that's job done. Okay, so if I now post this out, you can see that nothing's actually changing, but when I click in the area, we can change nodes. When I click back, we can come back again. What I've actually done is set different polygons in all the nodes. The only ones I didn't ch uh, set was the one in node one, because obviously we want to see how we set these up. So it's draw a polygon and then drop and dra uh, uh, drag and drop the node you want it to link to into the polygon area that you've just drawn. Okay, um, that's basically the linking up and how that all works. Again, you can still use the um, on the Mac command and click on the PC, it's control click and set up the um, uh, the target view for when you change nodes so we can still do all of that and that all works. So yeah, you can, you've, you've got quite a lot of control with the polygons as you're changing nodes. All right, but what we want to do now is obviously um, have some sort of feedback to the user. So when we hover over an area, we can see something happening. So that's actually relatively easy to do. Um, what I'm gonna do is select the rectangle. I named it ring white. Um, and it's the actual solid of it is too solid for me. This, it, it, it's too white. So I'm gonna actually bring the alpha down of this to say 75. So it's, it's there, we can see it, we know where it is, but it's not in your face, all right? So what I'm gonna do is now select the logic block for the color. And I'm going to say, under placeholders and hotspot, title. If this does not have a title, or rather, if, if the title is not blank, 
i.e. the hotspot has a title, I want it to change. I'm going to change to the color green. Now 255 is a, is, is a solid, so I'm going to change that down to 175. I don't quite want it to be a solid, but I do want it to change color. All right, so that's what that's going to do. But this is the but this is the clever bit, because it's a a polygon hotspot linked to a uh, a a a node. It's going to have a hotspot title. So what we're saying is is if there is a hotspot title, in other words, the title is not blank. I want it to change to green. Okay, so let's click save and have a look. And there it is. There we go. So when we hover over it, it turns green. So I've now got some active feedback that we've got an active area that we can click. Okay, so that's quite cool. Right. Um, any questions, Karen? I know it's a little bit quick to start with, and we actually did quite a bit, I suppose. But any questions in? Yeah, there is one question. Um, and I don't know if you're going to answer this uh, later or not, but um, it's a good question. Uh, Todd is asking, could you hide the mouse cursor when it's below the horizon, um, but shows above the horizon? Um, I'm actually going to put Thomas on the, <laughs> on the spot here, because he's written the code where the custom cursor can disappear, but goes from bottom to top. I'm sure if we used a custom cursor doing the other way around, so we could actually have a custom cursor to the top, and yeah, so he's just actually replied, uh, he's come on the teletype as we call it, and he said, yeah, can do this, wink. <laughs> so yes, he, we can. I suppose what I'll do is I'll type that up in the, um, uh, into the forum when we do the uh, component in the forum, um, just to tidy that up. But yes, we can. I mean, I haven't, and I won't be including that in this webinar, but yes, we can do that. Good to know, good to know. I see Neil's written to us. Um, can you change the shape when you go over the polygon? Um, we can swap the graphics out. I mean, the, the actual shape of the, um, if you look at the element that I'm using, the rectangle, um, we don't have a logic block for the radius. So there's nothing I can do with that. Um, but what we can do is swap the um, uh, the the rectangle for a different shaped one. So, yes, we can give the illusion that it's happening, but I can't change the shape of the rectangle. But I can swap it with another element um, to give that illusion. I do that later on anyway. So we will be covering that, um, but not just yet. Okay, that's it. And I just want to remind everyone to. Um, oh no, there's another question coming in. But uh, for those who who might have come later, uh, to use the Q and A question, uh, the Q and A tab at the bottom of the screen. Uh, otherwise, I'm afraid I'll miss your your question when we go through them. Um, so Carola has a question. Oh, I think uh, Thomas is answering that one. No. Uh, it's a bit off topic. Um, he said, is there a way you can uh, make sure the horizon remains straight when setting the target view? Um, don't think I understand that. Um, I if I'm setting the target view, oh, what this, you mean, yeah. uh, to see that remains. Well, we've got a grid here for that very reason. You just obviously line up the grid with the horizon of the image. Um, so there's 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 nothing I can type in to do that, other than um, if we have a look in the target. Actually, yeah, there is. Look, sorry. If we look at the target, I can set zero, so zero tilt, yeah, for the target. So I could go, boop, and there you go, and that would be a zero tilt. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was it. That was the question, and we have another one. Um, from Micha, the old component with arrows is flying over the ground, like floating over the ground. Is it possible to place the arrows more on the ground um, so that they're fly because um, they're flying a little too high in space for their taste? Uh, I think, yeah, it's just what I think we will go over that today, right? Yeah, I mean the 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 3D arrows that we've got at the moment, like the what 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 we call the G arrows or the Google arrows, they were always designed to to be off the ground and 
being a, a small portion or, 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 or a small part of the space of the bottom of the panorama, so the arrows rotated. Um, but if you're talking about this 3D cursor that we're looking at now, that you know obviously is not now stuck at the bottom of the screen, it, it moves with the mouse, it disappears off in the horizon. Um, but these these um, elements do actually have settings to actually adjust how far they are up or down in space. All right, so again, we'll be looking at that because what we'll be doing is sandwiching three elements together. So when you look down on it straight or straight down, it'll be a circle. But when you look at it on the side, you'll see it'll have some height. And yeah, so we'll be playing with that later. And uh, but I, now I'm rereading his question, and I think what he's asking is if you can actually change the the G arrows to be lower. Yes, you can. Um, but I get it. But it's 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 going to be because basically this uses some of their code, so it oh, okay. it, it, um, it 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 will the actual graphic that we use here. Um, you'll see that you can adjust the up and down. I do believe in the in the video that we made for the G arrows. I think we covered that there as well. Um, perhaps it's worth checking out that video. Um, well, I certainly remember it. talking about it. it. Just in case, maybe <laughs> yeah. it's useful. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly remember because you can actually adjust and how far away and how close the arrow is from the centre of the bottom of the screen, and you know how far it up or down, and the text boxes how up and down, and do they lean back or do they lean full? All of that sort of stuff that can be adjusted. Um, so yeah, okay. It it will be covered. Yeah, and. <laughs> We're just going through. There's a few more questions here. There's um, just to go back to Corolla's question about um, changing the horizon or changing the um, tilt in the target view. He was just wondering if there was a quicker way because that's what he does all the time. So he just didn't know if that was. Ah uh, no, I, I, so. I you know okay. generally speaking, I just use the grid. Yeah, I do the same. Yeah, just okay. You know, and. So. Um, so Angela has an off-topic question, um, mm. but I think I th I think I'll ask it anyway because I think a lot of people ask this question. Um, are there any plans to have a um, draw triangle tool so that we have an option to make arrows? Um, like she knows she can make them um, as C SVGs, but they're a little bit fiddly. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know if there's... I don't know if we have any plans for that, but... I've just got, add it to the bug tracker, we may add a key. <laughs> okay, there that's you go. What's, <laughs> it's, that's been, what's it's been in. recorded in our, uh, our to-do list, I guess, or big long to-do list. Oh, hang on. No, that, no oh. that, that, that was for the previous. Oh. Oh, that was for the previous okay. question. Sorry. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Okay. Right. <laughs> But possibly. I'll add it to the bug tracker anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? It might, be, it might be useful, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I can go from a square to a circle. I'm, perhaps we can go from a circle to a, I don't know, triangle, triangle. and see where we go. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Okie dokie. Okay. 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 Yeah, what's this? Uh, no, no triangle, triangle tool. tool, but we will have icons in the components toolbox. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay then. Okay, that's. I'll, I think that's that's it. Thanks for for those questions, even though they are they are a bit off topic. But I think they're. Like, no, it's all relevant. It's, it's all kind it's of relevant, relevant. I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's all good. Then it's all good. Carry on. Carry on. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. So where were we? Where you were at the stage where we had a. Um, right. Yeah. I changed the alpha of the circle, so it's no longer a brilliant white. It sort of blends in, and, and it's 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 very subtle until you move into an area of, in, of, of the polygon, so an area of interactivity, it turns green, and we can see that. What I want to do now is add a tooltip. Now this is quite cool, because I've not actually seen any of these have tooltips. Um, so I don't know if this is a first, but here we go. Here's my tooltip. I'm going to add that to the skin. I'm going to call this, because uh, I like to keep the skin tidy, so let's just call it float TT for tooltip. I am going to make it a child of this container because all the magic happens in this container. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is anchor the uh, tooltip top, middle, 
and no, actually not. I want top, top, um, top left. Now the tooltip itself is a hundred pixels. Now remember what I said. It needs to go on to the edge. So the tooltip needs to be minus fifty pixels to be in line with the edge. Because don't forget the mouse is located top left of this container. Okay, so that needs to be minus fifty pixels. I'm I'm quite happy with minus seventy six. Let's just call it minus eighty, just to round numbers up. And that's where the um, text will go. Now, if we have a look at this now, this is going to look a little bit odd. As you can see, it's laying flat to the floor because it's following the same 3D distortion, as it were, as the ring. Okay, which is quite good, really. Um, and the reason why I think this is quite good because in the past if you wanted to have any sort of graphic that looked flat you basically had to draw it in photoshop and then or in in another program and then give it that perspective view that it was you know so basically you squished it and made it look like it was elongated with this system you you can actually just draw a flat object so here is the is is the is the rectangle it's a flat object i know it's difficult to see because i've changed the alpha now but you can see it's flat you can see the text box is flat so you don't have to get technical when you're designing your own graphics in whichever graphics application that you're using all right now what we do need to do with this text box is flip it up we need to flip it up in 3d space so we can see it face on now this is actually uh, quite easy to do um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close this skin and open up a new skin and <coughs> excuse me I'm going to open up the components toolbox and if we look we got the 3d arrows all right so I'm going to have a look at this and if we have a look at the preview app because obviously with the 3d G arrows the the preview image is sitting straight up right okay so all I need to do is copy that code so let's just have a look at that code now I don't have to worry about a border radius because I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about overflows or box shadows or anything like that. What I'm looking for is this bit of code here that says I want to translate the uh, the 3D object and it's going to flip it up by minus 90 degrees. So I'm going to copy that. All right. And then what I can do is just close this. Don't save it. Open up our skin again. Go to the text box. And then in the... CSS styles I'll just open it up so we can see it I'm just going to paste it in now as I said don't worry about any of this because this will be part and parcel of the component this will all be in there this is just purely showing you the nuts and bolts and how it works okay so we're adding this little bit of CSS to it and what we should get now is the text box flipping up there we go so we've now got a 3d distorted text box with the cursor how cool is that right now settings what can we do with this text box the reason why we're here today is that we can mess around with this no end we can change its scale see it's it's because it's in 3d space it, it can get a bit too small if it's moved further away so we've scaled it up by 1.5 um, it's actually flipped up by 90 degrees so we can see it if I wanted it to lay back a little bit I could you know let's take that down to say 70 um, and see what that looks like so you can actually then get the text box leaning backwards or forwards you know so that's it leaning back um, yeah so you can you can really mess around with this this is what as I say this is the whole reason why we decided to do a bit on this because there is just so much you guys can play with but I'm going to take that back to being uh, minus 90 to keep it nice and straight so that's my text box okay so that's now the text box uh, uh, upright what I want the text box to display is the hotspots title so what we do as normal um, as we would do with any tooltip is select the text use the insert placeholder button select hotspots select hotspot title select when we click that it changes and it gives us the placeholder to show the hotspots title and that's exactly what it does now obviously it vanishes when we're outside of the polygon hotspot but we get the title when we're there all right okay so what i need to do now of course is hide and show this text box 
only when there is something to display, i.e. when we're inside a polygon. So again, what we're gonna use is very, very similar um, uh, logic. What we're gonna say is, um, uh, let me think, right, when the placeholder for the hotspot title, so when there's nothing there, or rather, when it's, um, when there is title to display, so when it's not blank, i.e. there is a hotspot title, we want it to become true. So I just need to deselect visible. So let's go back to the logic block there. So what we're saying is when the hotspot title isn't blank, i.e. there is a title in there, we want to see it. Okay, so let's just have a look at that. And there we go. That's quite good right okay I just want to tidy this up a little bit and how I'm going to do this is just to make it look that little bit better I'm going to take away the background take away the border I'm going to set the text to say green to match the color of the um, uh, the ring and I'm also going to add a little bit of CSS to the text box just to give it a drop shadow. So the way we're going to do that is go to the CSS inner styles. I'm just going to open up the text box. I'm going to paste in this. I said, don't worry, this will also be in the component as well. Um, and that should give us some nice green text with a, a slight black drop shadow. There we go. So that makes it stand out the background that little bit better. Here we go. So that's basically that working. Okay, right. Now, other things we can do with this. Now, of course, the the ring um, is visible all the time. So obviously we can go through walls with it and all that sort of thing. Now you can, if you want to, you don't have to, because most other software that I've seen, this is what the ring does. It goes through walls and, and that's that. But of course, with Pano 2 VR, what we're doing, we're, we're actually using polygon hotspots. And not only can I draw a polygon to say, this is where I want to go, I can draw a polygon to say, actually, in this polygon, I want this to disappear. And I want it to be replaced with something else. So what I'm going to do is replace it with a custom cursor. Now, we've already covered custom cursors in um, uh, modifiers and whatnot, but I'm gonna do the same thing here. Um, I'm just gonna grab a custom cursor, and just pop it into the skin. Um, that is just a wee bit too large, so I'm just gonna bring that down to say 50 pixels, that's probably too large as well, so let's bring it down to 40. And again, because this is going to be following the mouse put the cursor like our, uh, um, our, our floating cursor, I need to position it so it's halfway so i want that i want this to 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 represent the t the top of my mouse so the way i'm going to do that then if it's 40 pixels wide i need it to be minus 20. so you can see i've got here let's just have a quick look in the edit um view i've got show off can uh, off canvas elements of now i always have this selected and I, sometimes i forget to tell people to select it but i use this for the webinars because when you go off canvas the way Pano 2 VR does this is it puts in a, a an orange line to show you well that's the edge of your canvas and this is now going past it. So this so half of this is not going to be seen. But you can see we've now got the cursor right on the very edge. And what I need to do now is get the, the cursor right on the very top. So let's just I don't know um, it's it's 26 pixels. So let's do um, 13. Um, that's not 13, is it? Um, let's take it to the top um, shall we yeah there will do okay uh, actually no it's zero that's what I want zero what I'm talking about right so that's zero so that then puts the cursor right at the very top left hand co uh, corner now what I want this to do to track my mouse is give it the modifiers of move in the X direction with the mouse X, click OK. Now, those of you who know me know that I use keyboard shortcuts, so it's Command, Command V, or C for the um, uh, Mac, and it's Control V for the PC, and then Command V, uh, uh, v and paste it in. He says that went well. Right, I'll just delete that and do that again. 
Um, so for the cursor, then copy and paste. There you go. Talking about it, did it wrong. And all I need to do now is change that to Y and that to Y. So now what we should have is, he says, where's my power to view? Here it is. If I produce the output, we should have that mouse cursor showing. And then it turns into that one at the bottom. So what we need then is only to see this new cursor when um, when I don't want to see the ring, i.e. on against a wall or something like that. Okay, the other thing is I'm clicking and dragging and nothing's working, nothing's happening. And the reason why nothing's happening is because this cursor is an active element and it's in between my actual mouse pointer and the panorama. So what I actually need to do is set that to be permeable so that I can click through it. Once I can click through it, then I can click and drag the panorama. There you go. So that's that's it working. And the other thing I want to do, of course, is tidy this up. So let's just call this mouse. Right, okay, so that's my mouse pointer. And so what I'm going to do now then is set up some more polygons to hide this. Now this could be classed as being overkill, but this is entirely up to you. This is just another option you guys can play with. So with polygon hotspot selected, I'm going to draw another polygon. Um, let's just go around here. All right, so let's just, I don't know, do it quickly. All right, and I'm gonna give it the title of hide. All right, so that's, that's basically a title I'm gonna give the, the, the polygon. The polygon's gonna do nothing else other than be there. All right, I'm gonna be using that as a trigger for hiding and showing the cursor. So basically what I'm going to do is have the cursor hidden and only be shown when the hotspot title equals hide. I'm gonna make that true. All right, now when I'm, um, I'm using the, the term hide for the ring, all right, so I'm gonna hide the ring and we're gonna show this one. So that means then I need to go to the ring or we can go to the float here. And we've got here, so hotspot title, I think we've already done this. Um, I've done it in the, oh, I've already added it already. So that's okay. So hotspot title equals hide and it will hide by itself. All right, so that's, that's what it will do. So again, you can now see that it disappears. What that does mean is if you've got a pillar situation like this, all right, you could actually go to this and say, right, um, I'm gonna draw a polygon. Um, let's have a look. Uh, he says, let's, uh, what am I doing? Right, I've just done that completely wrong, but never mind. And we're just gonna call that hide. And then on the output then we can you can see it can hide as we go through so that's that's the the floating cursor hiding and we're then swapping it with a custom cursor right i think that's time i need a sup of a drink so karen do we have any questions we don't have any questions but i was wondering can you do something for me which is go it kind of goes back about five minutes or so and yeah maybe just cha just to quickly change the uh, the canvas background so we can see what the thing looks like in the uh, the, the circle looks like I mean, yeah. oh in here yeah um, right okay so um, all the way down the bottom yeah canvas background so let's go gray great yeah there ah there we go I know now you can't really see anything else but I just wanted to I was kind of trying to see it there you know what, what I can do is if I if I take the ring back to because I I, alpha, I changed the alpha to 75 because it obviously I didn't want it to be too leery in the actual panorama yeah. so if I was to whack that back up to 255 you'll see that back in the skin right okay yeah that's um, okay okay so that's that, that that will do that and let's just change that back to yeah. to white so you can see that there, there. yeah okay cool all right so... um let's say the only thing that will do is Obviously, on the output, it's going to be a very bright, leery <laughs> until very, it changes. Very pronounced. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know how to change yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. You know, so it's it's all good. 
I like that. I like I, that. I can sit and do this for ages. <laughs> I love the way it just disappears. Right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Okay. So, no questions. Sorry. sorry I just want. I was just uh, also kind of uh, putting in some time there for questions, but yeah, no one has has asked anything. So. Right. Okay. Cool. So, that's with the uh, cursor. Then, so we can you know hide and show, and I think that's actually quite good. It, you probably won't use this too often because obviously you've got to use a polygon to set the active area to change nodes you need to set a polygon to change you know to actually hide it um, but you know at the end of the day you know if, if you're in a situation where you're in a, a room and you've got you know bits sticking out and and bits and it just looks odd this white ring going through the wall then it just you know it's just another option you've got to play with all right okay so that's that um, I think what I want to do now let's have a look uh, what am I gonna do what I'm gonna do right I'm going to add a custom cursor so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna save this skin so file save as and we're gonna call this um, one because what I'm probably gonna do is use this as the component all right so we'll package this up as the component so i didn't want to go any further with this um but now we can dive in and break it and do whatever we need to do with it and it doesn't matter because we'll have this as the component in the forum all right so if i want to um, add a custom image so that's my spinner there it is all right all i need to do is just replace the ring so the spinner is what um, uh, 64 pixels so I'm just gonna drag that until it's a child of the container I'm gonna move the text box above it because we want the spinner and the text box above the spinner I can um, get rid of the ring he says boom it's gone and I'm gonna add the spinner now I need to obviously line the spinner up if the spinner is 64 pixels it needs to be 32 so minus, sorry, minus 32. All right, so that then puts it in line and it's a little bit too high up. So that needs to be minus 32 as well. And then that puts the center of the spinner in the container. Don't, don't forget the top left of the container represents where the mouse is. So let's just see what that looks like. So we've just changed the graphic out and there it is, we've now got a spinner. All right, so it is as easy as that to use your own um, elements. Now, what we needed to do with the spinner is what we needed to do with the other mouse pointer is we need to set the spinner to um, permeable because don't forget it's in the way of the mouse. So the spinner is in the way of the mouse touching the panorama. So we set that to permeable. Okay, and I'm also going to give this a name of spinner. All right, so that's that. Now, I've actually got a little website, again, I've used before, um, and I, what I wanna do is rotate the spinner when it's in an active area, okay? So what I've got then is I'm just gonna copy this link. Again, it's, it's um, oh, wrong, I didn't want Firefox. I'll wait for that to finish opening. Ooh, and shut. So we found this website or I found this website when we were playing around with CSS and basically all I do is copy this bit of CSS copy and I'm going to, let's just minimize that, paste it into the style sheet of the skin. All right, so I'm just gonna, a couple of spaces, paste that in. This is why I wanted to organize this to make it look a little bit better. All right, so this is the CSS necessary to rotate an element, okay? Now this won't do anything until I add a little bit more code into the actual element I wish to rotate. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna say this is spinner um, one. I'm now gonna copy and paste put that down there and we're going to call this spinner 2 and this is the one I'm going to rotate 
All right, so let's go back to our website where we were. And now what we're saying is, it's now saying add this piece of CSS code to the element that I actually physically want to rotate. I can also set a time as well. So two seconds is actually slow enough or fast enough for what I want to do. So we're just going to go into the uh, CSS styles um, and paste that in. Is it styles or inner styles? I can't remember. Um, let's just go. There we go. So you can see it rotating. So I've got one above the other. So the top one's rotating. OK, so what I want to do is only have one rotating when we're in an active area. OK, so I'm going to select the spinner and here it is. This is the, the one that needs to disappear. OK, so again, the logic for this is going to be placeholders, hotspot, uh, description so when it um, uh, let's have a think so when this has uh, bumps into a polygon hotspot where th there is title I want it to to hide okay so I when the hotspot title isn't blank I'm going to hide the spinner one which is the static one and then I want this one to show so placeholders hotspot title if it's if 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 it has a title i want it to show okay so what we should get then is the effect i'm after there we go okay right now i said before there's lots and lots of things we can change with this and i'm going to sort of quickly bump bump into the code because what i'm going to do is raise this off the floor a bit Okay, so when it's active, I'm going to get it to, to raise up. Now, before I do this, I'm going to copy and paste the spinner again. And set it underneath. And I'm actually going to call this spinner uh, drop, as in drop shadow. All right. I'm going to use the color tool, and I'm going to change its color to black. Okay, I might actually give it an alpha of 175 because I don't want it to be too harsh. That actually might be too too much, actually. Um, and also what I need to do is give the um, the the elements um, the uh, code where I can actually raise and lower them. All right, so I know that sounds a little bit odd, but bear with me. What I'm going to do is... Um, just got to think where I've put this now. So um, oh, let's get this get wrong. So if I go back to the components toolbox, this will be in the component. All right. So let's just find floating cursor and find my ring. OK, this is the code. Now, don't I say don't don't worry about this. This is going to be in the component. As you can see, this is going to be the component and this is the code that we require. But um, if we go back to my spinning um, elements, what I do need to do is add the code here. All right, so I'm going to add that bit of code transform. I'm also going to add it to this one. It all will be revealed in a second. Please bear with me. Um, inner elements. Okay, so that's that. Now, the reason being, is I've now got two elements stacked on top of each other. All right. Um, this one is going to stay on ground floor, hence why I've put no code in that one. It's empty. And this one is going to be raised off the floor. Okay. So this is um, now. Right, so transform translate 3D, and it's this end one. This end one is how many pixels it is up or down. So I'm actually going to put this to say two pixels, and that's going to raise it up by two pixels off the floor. So we should see all things being equal. He says, right, okay, I've put it in the wrong place. I thought I did, sorry. So bear with me. Trial and error. All right, here we go. Transform, get rid of that. And we're going to put that in the inner. That's where it needed to go. He says, all right, <laughs> I've broke that. Well, well done. Um, uh, 
no, okay. A um, little bit embarrassing, sorry. Uh, let's, what, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? So we've got the Preserve 3D. This is my spinner. This needs to be raised up. So 3D trans. Uh, translate. Let's try do. Let's try. I don't know. Let's try minus. Um, I don't know if Thomas or Christoph are seeing this, and if they can chime in. No. All right. Okay. That's that's not playing. That's not playing happy bunnies with me at the moment. Right. I tell you what. I'm going to do then is uh, quite possibly quite possibly um, quite possibly let's have a look um, so that's the anime rotor that's, that's the rotation um, and so transform translate 3d no that looks correct for me now that should be two pixels up I'll oh, preserve 3d is missing preserve 3d is missing Okay, right. Uh, that is missing. Let's just go to. Um, sorry, no, close that. Thomas has just told me I've actually made a mistake. Preserve 3D is missing. So let's just go to the. Uh, this one. And the ring. And. Okay, that's not there. That's odd. Uh, so transform pre preserve 3D, but that's in the other one. That's that's actually in the in my skin. So let's have a look at this. Right. So Thomas, if you're looking, um, if we have a look at the uh, main container, that says transform style 3D. So that's got that. And this one, uh, do, I, do I need to put that in? Possibly, yeah. Oh, norm, uh, okay, normal style, not inner element. Okay, so let's not put that in the normal then. It's a good job I've got someone like Thomas looking over my shoulder. <laughs> right, here we go. And let's see what that does. Okay, that's not really give me what I want. All right, um, I don't want to get stuck on this. Um, let's just have a look at this one. Um, let's just put that in there, and let's just do a minus minus two. So I've got one going in one direction, one going in another. That should. No, that's not playing ball. I have got a skin that actually does work with this. Um, so let me have a look at the old floating ring, um, floating spinner. Here we go. So let's copy and paste that and see where I've gone wrong. Um, like all these things, it was all working until we do the webinar. So in the webinar on this one, then I've got these three. So let's just make sure that that functions. He says, come on, load. Right, okay, so that's not doing anything there at all, is it? Okay, so that's, um, so visible, so mouse over. True, so placeholders. So this is it, this is, this shows you that it's all real, it's all live. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> right okay basically what's going to happen is one of these spinners is going to raise off the ground with one on the floor okay so what i'm going to do is just show them all and hide the top one and let's just see what we get just to make sure because it's it's just purely so here we go you can see that where one's raised off the floor can you see that so we have the black one underneath it acting as a drop shadow and one above it so I, I'm I'm just certain I've just forgotten something. Um, so in the other, in, so that's just to rotate it, and it's this one that has the code. 
and it's because I'm ah right I know what I've done I've been totally silly right what I've done is I've adjusted the wrong thing the actual height is adjusted in the middle I was adjusting the back setting so that's why it broke so I've probably actually gone in there through panicking broke this even further but um, what we should have done is it's this one so that needs to be set to zero I'm going to set that to say 20 um, and let's just see what that does for me right okay still not all right all right I don't want to get hung up on that I, I will put um, a um, uh, this skin because obviously the skins physically functioning I don't know what I've done here I've just in my um, just doing what I'm doing I'm probably just you know miss something and panic there i mean it happens I so i'm gonna okay. go i just want to i want to interrupt you because i just want you to know that um you're getting you know people are patting you on the back virtually so federico is saying don't be embarrassed you're the you're the best anyway <laughs> <laughs> you showed well, how thank to you very much an just... icon an you file know? um yeah. and, and he has a question we'll we'll, we'll um We'll talk about that later. And also, Babs was also trying to help, and I missed it. She uh, said, it "Like, oh, maybe it's the y-axis," and, and ended up being it. But it also goes to show uh, sometimes when you're when you're hung up. I think all of us are just staring at the screen, trying to see if we can figure it out ourselves. And uh, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like a big puzzle. So, um, yeah, absolutely, it's a fun absolutely. That's um, well. I think the key things here is what we've done is we've shown that we can use the polygons for swapping different graphics i mean we had actually have a static graphic here and one that's spinning what i was trying to achieve here was this spinner two was to raise itself off the ground um and i don't know if i should be there because it wasn't in my working one um so and that is quite annoying but it's it's not playing but i mean obviously i do have a skin and i and and when we you know when i um i say i when we um uh, build the uh, component in the forum and put it in there i'll explain all of this and how to get this because obviously i'll have the time to type it out and test everything and make sure everything works perfectly um it's annoying because if i go to the skin it does work there it is so I'm not lying people it does actually physically function but the idea is is that when we go into an active area you get the spinning with the drop shadow and when we don't it doesn't so but anyway we can we can worry about that afterwards um, well, Michael is saying it was minus 20 I, I missed it I was looking somewhere else uh... well the the actual black one should be sitting at zero that, that shouldn't have any code in it at all really because it doesn't need to um, and then uh right so so this is the one that works all right so this is the over the over state so this one um so here we've got the rotation uh so that, so i've got the rotation in the inner but as thomas was saying it's just in the css styles it was saying it's minus 20 to come up so i'm going to copy that and paste it into my one that we were just working on all right and just so here it is on my one and I'm just gonna paste that in there so it is the minus 20 yeah okay well spotted this does it work no there is I've, I've left a bit of code out somewhere and I can't see where and without sort of you know concentrating and not talking and which mm -hmm. is not very good for a webinar and, and, I don't really uh, want to go down that way just to be clear way. that the we don't have to worry about this anyway it, it'll be part of the component absolutely I mean um, well the actual component itself is just going to be the ring that's going to change colors and 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 it'll be active it'll turn green with the tooltip and all that sort of stuff um, but all the modifications all of this obviously this is the whole point of the webinar was to show the modifications um, and this being one of them it, it was a bit ambitious um, it is actually covered in another webinar that we did with the um, uh, the the circular disk because we did exactly the same thing there raised it up and put a, a, sh a text shadow underneath it and they both rotated together but I think you know in this uh, particular um, webinar if we go back to our original our disk i mean 
that's that's doing exactly what I need it to do. Um, in fact, in fact, what I'm going to do here, just to prove a point, because now it's bugging me. All right, and I don't like to be bugged. So let's just go two. All right, let's just save that as two. I'm going to just copy and paste that. All right, white ring. Going to call that one. Uh, because this is part of the component and I've actually preloaded all of these elements with the right code. So that one, theoretically, the white ring should be above it. So all I needed to do was to drop in 20 in there and that should give me the two rings. There you go. So the two rings, so that's already preloaded. Now 20 is way too much. All right, so I'm going to um, uh, return that back down to say um, two pixels. I'm going to turn the black ring black, okay, because at the moment it was still white. And what I'm going to do now is copy and paste the white ring, put it underneath. All right, so this one, which is above, which is two pixels, this one that's going to be below is going to be minus two pixels so what we should end up with is a sandwich and this is probably what I should have done to start with there it is now you can see the sandwich is wrong I've actually got the minus the plus and minus is round the wrong way so if we go back to this you'll see that if I put that to be in a, um, a positive number and this being a minus number what we should end up with is the there we go we've got the you can see the black and everything there I just need to rearrange um, the layer in the stacking and that should be fine um, let's just go back to this um, I'm sure this was two let's just take that back to zero and this one was minus two um, minus two and let's just take that back to zero and see where that takes me and there we go job done so yeah there you go um, you've got the the stacking order now this is actually in 3d space because when we look down at it we're completely straight down so therefore we only see the top graphic when we move slightly to the back you can start to see the the black one in the middle and then the the white one on the outside and if I start to move that forward you've then got this going on so you've got the stacking there so as you can see this is what I was trying to achieve with this with the spinny things um, I just forgot to put the right code in um, but the idea is as you can see you've got the lower white ring and the upper white ring and the idea is the lower white ring is the normal ring and then when we um, hover over an active area um, the idea was that we're going to end up with a, a black spinner and then a white spinner on the top of it, both rotating to give you the drop shadow. But you can see it clearly all working there so we can achieve the 3D look. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sort of running out of things to say about this now. Um, but just to just to recap on this, the, the white ring uh, that will come with the component has this code preloaded. All right, so... All you'll be doing is changing this end figure. This end figure is the one that raises it up and, and lowers it down. So the top one is two pixels up. The black ring, which is at, sitting at zero, so that has zero written there. Theoretically, I can just delete this code, but I've left it in there to help me with the webinar. And then you just put two, you put in minus two to make it below. So the stack in order is how you see it in the tree. We've got the white ring at the top, black in the middle, and then the white ring at the bottom so yeah so that's basically it anyway I'm gonna throw it open to Karen do we have any questions Karen after making a complete mashup of that <laughs> no I think uh, but you made a nice um, uh, recap now I see what, what, what you were trying to do and yeah recovery there we go yeah recovery good recovery that's right <laughs> uh, so um, I'm gonna go back uh, so Babs was it, um, earlier was asking uh, um, a few questions. I think is clear now. Um, 
that the code that's, that you're using is CSS and you just drag a, a child, um, an element to a parent to make it a child. Uh, these were just uh, um, basics. Terminology, yeah. So the yeah. float cursor is the parent element, and these are child elements. We, we, I tend to refer to them like that. Um, if you're new to this, then obviously it's a little bit confusing, but yeah. So that's a child element of the float cursor container. And um, okay, so I think that's it. Oh, and also asking where um, about the webinars, um, where the videos are. We get this question ah. a lot, so there that you can find the webinars um, on our website, and Sorry. we put them also on um, YouTube and Vimeo. They're all there, but I think the easiest way to go and find what you need is to use our website and use this cool little filtering um, bit that yep. we've got here. So if you're looking for something specific, I think we've got That's all it. the got, major got, Yeah, absolutely. There. So if you're just starting off, click 101, and it, it rearranges everything into the 101s. We actually did quite a few, but so start at the back, work forward. So getting started and working forward. Yeah. If you're new to Panda 2 VR, the um, even if you're you know, not new to panoramas or anything like that. Um, the one oh ones are are great for getting a basic understanding of, of how to work within Panda Two VR and, and all that it can do. Um, it really breaks it down. They're they're great webinars. Right, okay. Um somebody asked about changing the colour of an SVG. I might have gone over that a little bit too quick, mm -hmm. so I'll just go back to the skin. These are SVG graphics and basically the skin editor has a colour tool. And if the SVG is made correctly, we can actually access the color in the SVG and change it. So we can just use the color picker, make it dark green, apply it, and we've now got a dark green SVG graphic. Um, all of our um, uh, components, they're in the component toolbox. So all of the SVGs you see in here, the simplex version and the silhouette, the black and white ones, they're all the same. I can, um, as an example, we can add a, a full screen button to the skin. Here it is. I can select, say, the top graphic. Actually, I'll select um, both of these graphics because you can do that. Um, have a look at the, 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 in the color tool, you can see that the button, the SVG is made up of two colors. I can expand this and it says SGV for SVG fill. I could change that instead of making it a color I can actually set it's alpha to zero um, and then I could actually set the white element and make that red and that completely changes the button there you go so we now have a nice little red full screen button at the bottom of the screen there you go so yeah that's um, oh look. <laughs> But yeah, so you know that's how we change the colors of SVGs. But the SVGs do have to be written correctly. Um, the other thing to watch out for as well is there's plenty of websites that say they can convert your PNG into an SVG. You upload the image and then you download the SVG. Basically, all they're doing is putting the same PNG in an SVG wrapper, which basically means it doesn't expose the color, so therefore you can't change it. So not all SVGs are built equally as they say right anything else um yeah uh, michael has a question and unfortunately it looks like he has to go and his yeah, question no his question was uh when's version seven coming out <laughs> and yeah uh, <laughs> uh pfft, i don't know piece of string half twice half its length i don't know um there's lots of work in the background and when it's ready it will be ready there's, there's, there's no point pulling buns out the oven half baked you know what I'm saying <laughs> that's, a, yeah, that's one way to say it <laughs> that's great uh, and I think I think that's it um, Babs is asking if since COVID if the use of Pena 2 VR has picked up on websites uh, yes. <laughs> I, maybe, but I, I, I mean, I think, uh, yeah. It's probably I'm starting to see a lot more, especially on support of, um, you know, um, actually 3D artists making like exhibitions. 
and they're using Pano 2 VR to build the tours. So they're obviously creating it correct angulars in like, I don't know, 3D Max or something, uh, to just making, you know, computer generated images and then using Pano 2 VR to make the virtual walk around of an exhibition and then having pinned videos and, and whatnot on the walls. And I've seen a lot of that. Um, so yeah, um, I would say it has made some impact, it would, it, you know, but we would like to see more, but yeah. I think it has. Yeah, I think. Uh, right. I think that's it. Are we all good? And um, Cameron, you've. Oh, I'm muted. I'm muted again. Sorry. Yeah, you're muted. Uh, <laughs> they need to put like a really big red button to tell me if I'm muted. Um, so, hey, uh, Babs, if you want, you can send us an email, and we can uh, maybe give you some of those artist names that Martin was, was talking about, uh, that would be, or, or, I, I, or better, I, we could, I don't know if you know, but we have a great forum and we have a great Facebook user group. Uh, and there you could probably post that question um, about artists and uh, using, and making galleries with Panda 2 VR. There's a lot of, a lot of very active um, users on both of those um, communities. Absolutely, and one of the things that we've that we've put out, and it is actually in the Facebook user group. But anyway, Babs, be, um, if 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 you want a forum uh, access and you don't have one at the moment, um, please email in to support at ggnome.com, um, like genome.com, uh, with your required username, and then we'll set the 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 account up. Um, for you, um, but we do actually have a uh, Facebook um, user group as well as a Facebook gallery group. But the user group, what we posted in there, was a note saying to all people that can contribute. So anybody that can make three D images or make skin graphics or you know audio people that can make audio sound effects or intro videos for projects and things like that, you know. If 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 you've if you've got a service that you think others could benefit from, then again, email in with um, uh, actually in the Facebook group it does say what we need from you is in the way of graphics and a little statement. But you know we we what what we want is people to to email in to us, and when we've got enough because at the moment we don't, but when we have enough, what we'll do is we can create a page, and say right you know if you want resources for your. Um, uh, your tours or you want skins or graphics or components or audio clips or video clips there is going to be a page and the idea is that these people can give us their information we'll post it and then anybody looking for these services can go to uh, the 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 web page and see who can then uh, supply those services to you so it's just like a, an index of of these services but in the meantime yeah certainly go to the forum or the facebook group and just say hey anyone can make me a 3d image because i really would like one and i would like to part with some hard-earned cash if you are willing to build it for me and i'm sure you'll get lots of people so here we go right uh karen you're muted again no you're not so like yeah, i wasn't even talking i was just you know staring at the screen that time <laughs> okay uh so Atanas has said that um, in Telegram, there's a great Russian group for Pana 2 VR users. So if you're Russian, look for that group in, uh, in Telegram. It might be also useful. Okay. Well, that's it from my end. And uh, I would just like to take the time to wish everyone a wonderful day, evening, morning, and hope to see you again on, at the next webinar. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. I think that's going to be a TBA as usual. Um, um, again, if you've got suggestions, please email them into support. Um, but yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll post in the forum and Facebook page uh, what the next one will be in due course. Um, but thank you very much for joining today. I do apologize for the uh, lack of 3d spinny things with drop shadows we we actually created the spinny things and we created drop shadows but sadly not together but you know it will be in the page on how to do it and it will all be tried and tested and working properly i can assure you because <laughs> i'm not going to get egg on my face twice but anyway um in the meantime you know until next time we meet up thank you very much for joining us and from me goodbye bye thank you bye <laughs>